Yo, what's up? Mr. I Hall here. Just cruising through the schedule by myself again. Loving it. But wanted to stop and make a video for you guys today because I am headed to the domain right now. And if you're not familiar with the domain, it's just, you know, a lot of high-end shops and uh, apartments and condos and stuff like that. Uh, but there is a lot of things that you need to think about when you're doing these jobs, whether you're alone or you have other people. Um, and throughout the video, I kind of touch base on a lot of them. But you know, one of the one of the things, you, if you get anything out of the video here, is maybe just do a little research uh, if you're getting any questions before going into a job, because there are certain tools that you're going to need, whether it's a floor dolly or just a regular appliance dolly or whatnot wheelbarrows obviously you don't want to bring a wheelbarrow through a really nice apartment complex so you got to make sure you have all the right tools and when you're starting out you might not have any but uh, if you do enough jobs you're gonna get them all for free on the jobs that you need every th every uh, everything that I use today was uh, acquired from junk jobs so when you find a couple cones save your cones because you're gonna need them when you're parked on the side of the street yeah, when you find a couple shovels, save your shovels. When you find chains, save your chains. You don't need to buy any supplies to get this job done. But you do need to keep your eye out. And you need to make sure you bring the right tools to the job. Let's get going on this one. It's a pretty cool video. It's going to be short and sweet. I think it's under five minutes. So uh, it's just a little how-to on what to look for if you're going to get into some, uh, some of the apartment complex jobs. First thing that you need to do is find out if there's a concierge. And if there's a concierge, sometimes they're going to require uh, to see your insurance, you know, proof of insurance, whether it's for the automobile or for your general liability. So if you don't have either one of those, you probably shouldn't be in business, but uh, you wanna keep those things handy because you're gonna need it a lot. Some people just wanna see a, a copy, you know, a certificate of the insurance for your general liability. And then other apartment complexes they're going to want, uh, a, you know, an endorsement from the insurance company listing the apartment complex as an additional insured. So you want to make sure you have a good relationship with your insurance agent and you can get those things quickly because sometimes some agents will take a few days and, you know, maybe the job needs to get done tomorrow. So keep your insurance handy. You might need it to book to get a job. You might need it to get through the door. So keep all of these things in mind and let's get into the video see what we got going we're headed to the domain in austin texas guys thanks for checking out the channel one of the things you probably don't think about when you're doing junk removal in the city a lot of the times you're gonna have to be doing it in apartment complexes walking down long halls, up and down elevators, so that's not always dirty, but you need the right tool, and you gotta budget enough time into the job, because it's gonna take a lot longer than something else on the curb, right? But, if you haven't noticed, one of the advantages is that you can usually do these jobs alone, but you have to check ahead because if it has an elevator, you're good to go. But a lot of these apartment complexes don't have an elevator, so you can't do a job like this by yourself if there's a bunch of stairs. So you Google the property, find out what kind of apartment complex it is, find out if you have any stairs that you're working with, and then you'll know if you can do it alone or if you're going to need help things to know. Another thing to think about at these kind of apartments, the ones that are kind of swanky, sometimes they have a concierge and so they're gonna need to check in at the front desk or they won't let you in. And then also another thing to consider is parking. A lot of times they don't want you to park where the residents come in and out. So you're gonna have to park over on the side by like a loading dock. And then also, they don't want you using the same elevator a lot of the time. Usually they'll have a freight elevator. 
And so you're gonna have to talk to either your customer or the concierge and figure out if there's special parking or uh, a certain elevator you have to use. Last but not least, don't lock yourself out. You get on the wrong side of this door, right there, out here, you're not getting back in. So you're either gonna have to prop the door or have someone hold it for you. So in this situation, I'm just dragging this thing out. So if you're gonna open that door, better either prop it or have somebody hold it open if you need to get back in there. If not, your customer's gonna have to come back down and let you in, and that's kind of embarrassing. So clearly, pros and cons to doing apartment jobs and additional things that you're gonna wanna look out for, like parking, access, getting in and out, and then also uh, elevators, stairs. You don't wanna lock yourself out. Sometimes I'll ask the customer if I can borrow their key fob. Some people are weird about that, but uh, if they think they're gonna have to come down and let you in every time, then yeah, it might make more sense. But a bunch of stuff you wanna look out for. And if you don't, you can get yourself in a pickle.